to Bentham de Gerius, um, the daughter of Mar uh, my, sorry, of <laughs> 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 the daughter of Bentham de Gerius, and of course, our mother is sitting right here. You need a better lawyer than me. I need a better lawyer than me. I need a better lawyer than me. You see why I did that? <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Stay with the care. Right. Welcome. And thank you for coming. I'd like to talk very briefly about how the idea for the Moray House Trust was born and what we hope to achieve here. Dad would be the first to admit that he did not start out in life with any particular plans. In fact, he was fond of telling us the story of how he announced to his mother, at about the age of 18, his ambition to become a turf accountant. She was suitably impressed until a slightly more worldly friend let her know that this form of bookkeeping involved racial forces and gambling. <laughs> Her enthusiasm waned and Dad was duly dispatched to study law in London. I'm not sure that many of us go through life with a coherent plan or vision. Our paths are formed at the intersection of the things that happen to us, the things that happened around us, and who we are. Events and character mold us. When a life ends, though, we tend to look back at it, evaluate it, and try to piece together its animating spirit. This has been the process in our family since the death of my father, a process that will be familiar to all those who have lost a loved one. It is possible to look back and trace, if not a grand plan, certainly a continuity of themes from Dad's New World day, days through to the publication of Stabrick News. Throughout his adult life, Dad believed passionately in an open society, in the freedom to discuss and to de debate, to exchange views and ideas in public. He treated words and images as powerful tools to be used responsibly, not, for example, to arouse a pervasive sense of fear or anger, but to inform, to uplift, to persuade. Freedom of expression, he believed, entailed responsibilities the duty to establish facts accurately, to conduct exchanges civilly, and to accord respect to others of a different persuasion, to name but a few. Moray House Trust is founded on this belief that an open society where ideas circulate and there is a culture of debate and discussion is the precondition for a healthy and stable nation. Ideas and opinions can, of course, take many forms and shapes. They can be found as readily in the words of a poem, the contours of a painting, or the lines of a song, as in the content of an editorial or a political speech. We can use words and images to convey a powerful message or simply to celebrate or share a moment, an image, a thought. Yesterday, I had the privilege of listening to a rehearsal of Martin's poems. Only a few feet from where Martin himself would sit on his visits to Moray House. The young people you will hear shortly are clearly familiar with Martin's poetry. And as they read it, with their own particular inflections and interpretations, they bring the poems and the poet to life. Culture should not be an abstraction something to be found only in libraries and theatres and lecture halls. It should live and breathe and grow in concert with us. We offer this small space, our home, 
as a sanctuary for them. My father was blessed with the company of a small group of like-minded souls. They met regularly in this house and elsewhere to share ideas and offer opinions. They did not agree on everything, but they shared a similar ethos and a strong affection for Guyana. They enriched his life, and he felt privileged to count them as friends. Tonight, we will pay homage to one of them, Martin Carter, and listen to others such as Joe Singh and Ian MacDonald. Several more are to be found in this room, and we remember and honor those such as Kenneth King and Lloyd Saywall, who are no longer here. It is one thing to have an idea. It is quite another to execute it. We have sought the assistance of some of Dad's friends for this venture, and they have risen to the challenge. Foremost among them, Van der Radzik, who organized this evening's entertainment. We offer our sincere thanks to her and the others who have undertaken to support and assist, and ask that you lend your support to the Trust, so that this evening will be the first of many more. Thank you.